Welcome back. In the last video we talked about what kind of forms different nutrients and substances are carried in the mammalian blood. In this video we're going to cover one of the forms which was carbon dioxide and what it does to pH of water. So I'll go for the actual dot point. It says students will perform a first time investigation to demonstrate the effect of dissolved carbon dioxide on the pH of water. So this was an extra experiment you would have done in class. And you might not have done exactly the same experiment that I'm going to go and cover here. We can cover different experiments to test the same thing. But mainly, I mean, the idea is just what, why do you do it and what do you get out of it? So that's what I'll cover here as well. So the purpose was to demonstrate the effect of dissolved carbon dioxide on the pH of water. So what does carbon dioxide, which is in our blood, do to the pH of water? And that's important because we produce carbon dioxide as a byproduct of cellular respiration. And what does that do to our pH of our plasma? That's what that is mainly asking. So the equipment you might have used in your um, class would have been a pH meter or a universal indicator. These are just ways that we can test the pH of things, either a pH meter or the universal indicator. Uh, you would have had some form of beaker, a straw, and some distilled water. And the reason why it has to be distilled is because if it's not distilled, then it might not have a pH of 7, neutral pH. And the method, so this is how you would have done the actual experiment, is first, you would have poured water into a beaker. After that, you would have checked that pH to make sure it's a pH of 7. Then you placed a straw into a beaker and blew air or bubbles into that beaker. And remember, whenever you blow something out, you blow out carbon dioxide. So that's the way we can actually check what carbon dioxide does to water, by blowing carbon dioxide into a beaker. It's one of the most simplest ways of doing it. And then, last but not least, you recheck your pH. So you, you observed if it has changed or not. So again, this is the same concept, but just in picture form. So first, again, you just put your, uh, your beaker and you put your water, distilled water into that beaker. That was step one, pour water into beaker. Now in step two, you had your pH meter. So to put your pH meter into your water, just to check what pH it actually has at the beginning before you do anything. And you found it has that pH of 7, which is that neutral pH. Now this is obviously, I'm really sorry about my drawings. I cannot draw human beings. So one of my biggest weak, I mean, my drawing is generally quite bad, but when it comes to humans, it's even worse. So this is supposed to be a, a person who blows into here. So he's blowing into the speaker and he's using his brown thing, which is meant to be a straw. So what he's doing is blowing it into it. And you can see you've got these gray dots and it's our carbon dioxide, which is blowing into it. So our third step was place straw into beaker and blow air into it. And what we exhale is mostly carbon dioxide, or quite a bit of this carbon dioxide. Now is our step three. And our last step, we recheck the pH. So now we recheck the pH with that added carbon dioxide. And we had a look at what happened to the actual pH. And we found that the pH was generally lower than seven. So it could have been, if you blow, blew in it for a couple of minutes, it could have been maybe 6.5-ish. If you blew it for longer, it would have been even lower. So the more you, longer you blow into it, the lower the pH. And that means it's become more acidic. So the lower the pH, the more acidic it has become. So the conclusion, dissolved calm dioxide, which we've done by blowing calm dioxide into water, lowers the pH. So that was our observation. We lowered the pH. Now, the reason why is remember, this was... One of the ways is that carbon dioxide can travel in actual plasma, and plasma is just water. So by doing this, we actually have a look at what happens in our plasma as well, this experiment, because it's similar to what happens in plasma. We have CO2, which is carbon dioxide, and this plus means it reacts, so it reacts with the water inside that we've put it into. So CO2 plus C um, H2O produces these hydrogen carbon ions, so hydrogen carbonate ions, and remember, this was one of the forms that CO2 or carbon dioxide can travel in. That's one of the forms you actually need to remember for your last dot point. So make sure you remember HCO3, or another word for it is hydrogen carbon ions. And, but it produces, well, when it does this, it also produces this here, which is a hydrogen ion. And the more of these, this we have, so this lowers our pH. Lowers pH. 
and that's the reason why if you blow into it, it actually we our our pH is lowered not because of the CO two, but because CO two reacts with water to form hydrogen carbon ions and this hydrogen, which lowers our pH. So that's our conclusion. So also when it comes to this kind of experiment, you need to know the safety issues, but there aren't really that many safety issues when it comes to this experiment. I mean, you could maybe drop your beaker, so you need to be careful that you shouldn't drop your beaker. That would be maybe a safety concern you should have. And the other ones would be like, don't drink, don't swallow your straw. But I guess that would be pretty straightforward. And I mean, most people wouldn't um, swallow their straw. So the main, I guess, main safety concern would be just to make sure you don't drop your beaker because that could be painful. But I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.